Okay, today's lecture is about the riemann lebesgue theorem. Uh, it's a very powerful piece of theory, uh, and it may be the, the hardest uh, theorem I've ever walked you through, so just uh, kind of hang on in with it. <coughs> what the riemann lebesgue theorem states is if you have a bounded function from a closed interval a, b into uh, the real numbers, that this function is Riemann integrable if and only if its set of discontinuities is of measure zero. Uh, this enables us to switch from worrying about uh, properties of functions to worrying about properties of sets, which sometimes can be simpler. Okay. Now, uh, let's, it's an if and only if, so let's begin with the assumption uh, that f is bounded and Riemann integrable. Uh, let's suppose that it's bounded between little m and big M uh, on this closed interval. And let's let a be the set on which it is not continuous. So, so we're going to prove that this set a is of measure zero. Okay. Uh, <coughs> note uh, that, that A is the set of uh, X in the cl uh, closed interval from AB such that the oscillations of F at, at the point X are greater than zero. Now, we're going to break this set down into, or, or look at certain subsets of it. Uh, let A sub K be the set of X in uh, AB uh, where the oscillation of f on, on x is greater than 1 over k. Uh, we'll show that the, uh, uh, let, let epsilon be greater than g uh, 0 be given and let k element of the natural numbers be fixed. Okay. Now, let p be a, a partition of the closed interval a, b such that the upper Riemann sum of f and the lower Riemann sum of f are within epsilon over 2k of each other. All right. <clears throat> we'll now talk about controlling A. Uh, if uh, the open interval, the, the interior of the ith subinterval meets A sub k, uh, then uh, big M <coughs> uh, of uh, big M sub i minus little m sub i will be greater than 1 over k. All right. Uh, let <coughs> uh, sigma prime indicate summing over the subintervals of P whose interior uh, meets uh, A sub k. Then we, we can say this, this 1 over k times the sum of delta uh, xi is less than or equal to the sum prime of mi minus little mi delta xi, uh, which will be less than uh, the upper sum minus the lower sum, which itself is less than uh, epsilon over 2k. All right. Now, it, it follows then that the sum uh, of these um, intervals that, that meet a k will be less than epsilon over 2. Okay. Now, the, the union of intervals which contain points of a k may miss uh, the points of a k that are within p itself. These points may be covers with intervals whose total length is less than epsilon over 2 it follows that AK is covered by open intervals whose total length is less than epsilon. Therefore, AK has measure zero. Since A is the union of A1, A2, A3, etc., it, it follows that A uh, must be of measure zero itself. Okay, we, we've now proven uh, that if a function is Riemann integrable and is bounded, uh, then a set of discontinuities has measure zero. Let's now show that, that uh, 
if it has measure a, if, if a bounded function has a set of discontinuities of measure zero, then it will be uh, Riemann integrable. Okay. Um, for s greater than zero, let's let a sub s be equal to the set of of x in the closed interval a b, uh, whose oscillation at the the uh, is greater than or equal to s itself. Okay. Now then a s is its uh, itself is of measure zero as is is a subset of the set of discontinuities of f. Okay, so let's take that and put a pin in. All right. <coughs> Let's find a good partition. Okay. Um, let B sub S be the set of uh, points uh, in, in uh, the closed interval A, B, such that the oscillation on, uh, of F at X is less than S. Okay. Then A sub S union B sub S um, is equal to the closed interval because these guys are complementary to each other. All right. For x element of B sub s, there is a delta x greater than zero, such that the oscillation of uh, f on the open interval uh, x minus delta x, x plus delta x is less than s. Okay. Let u sub s be the union uh, of uh, all of the open intervals for all of the x uh, in BS. It is not difficult to see that U is, is open and it, it is a union of open intervals. Okay, now let I sub I for I element of the natural numbers be a set of open intervals whose uh, unions uh, contains A sub S. Okay. Then U is a set, let, let U equal a set of US, uh, I1, I2, I3, etc. Uh, that U will be an open cover of the closed interval AB. By a previous lemma, there's a partition PK of uh, closed interval AB obtained by subdividing uh, uh, a, B, K times that at each subinterval of P, K is contained in some element of, of U. Note that any subinterval that meets A, S must be contained in some uh, I sub I because it cannot be contained in U, S. As, as F's uh, oscillation on it would be too large. All right. Um, now, let epsilon greater than zero be given. Um, suppose that uh, M and big M are such that F of X is bounded by, uh, by them. Okay, now let choose a particular S now by letting S be equal to epsilon over two times B minus A and let I sub I be a set of open intervals containing A sub S, uh, the sum of whose lengths are less than uh, epsilon over two times M minus little m. And let P be a partition of AB such that every sub interval of P that meets A sub S is contained in some I. And now <coughs> consider uh, that U sub P, uh, U P uh, of F minus L P of F is equal to this uh, sum a as we've seen before. <coughs> Let uh, sigma prime now denote summing over the terms that meet A sub S and let sigma double prime uh, denotes summing over the remaining terms. Okay. Uh, 
summing over the terms that meet a sub s, we, we see uh, first off uh, that uh, this will be less than or equal to uh, the sum we get when we replace the individual m sub i minus little s m, m sub i by the maximum and minimum of the function. That can be factored out. And then the total sum of the subintervals is less than uh, epsilon over 2 times m minus little m by, by our, our choice uh, of uh, partition. Uh, and this all sums to less than epsilon over 2. Okay. Okay, now, okay, we'll uh, look at the rest of it. Uh, note that when we sum over the remaining sums, okay, uh, we, we have a bound on our little m, on our big M minus little m sub i, which is epsilon over uh, 2 times b minus a, because the, the, these are the intervals where our function uh, is just uh, either continuous or almost continuous. Uh, <coughs> We can factor that out of the sum, and as my, my uh, uh, intervals uh, will sum to a length less than b over a, we have this, we'll re reduce it to, to b over a here. We can now see that the upper uh, sum minus the lower sum uh, will be within epsilon of each other, and therefore uh, our function is Riemann integrable.